Church fam, welcome to our online service. We're glad so to have you. glad you're worshiping with us online this morning. We believe God has a message for us and a message for you. So go ahead and take a moment to share this service. But don't stop there. There's someone in your life, a family member or a friend, who needs to hear this message of encouragement. So you can pop on over to our YouTube page anytime throughout the week. Just search Crossway Church South Florida and share our content, share our worship videos, share these messages, and encourage someone in your life today. Absolutely. Also want to encourage you in your giving to the Lord. I think giving is one of the ways that God is honored in our lives and God expands his kingdom through us. So he, he gives us resources, financial resources and otherwise, that he wants us to steward for his kingdom so that he can bless other people's lives. So I want to encourage you to continue to give and give faithfully to the Lord. You can do that at our website. Uh, you can do that on our app, Crossway Church South Florida app. Um, Every time you do that, it fuels the mission of mm -hmm. Jesus here at Crossway and making disciples throughout South Florida. So I want to encourage you to continue uh, to give and give today. Amen. And if you're watching for the first time, we're so thankful that you're here. Welcome to the family. We want to be a support to you. If there's something going on in your life, if there's something keeping you up at night, let us pray for you throughout the week. If there's any type of support that you need, jump onto our digital connect card today or anytime throughout the week and let us know how we can be a support to you. Awesome, guys. I hope you enjoy the service today. Lean in, open your heart. God's going to speak to you. Just give me cheese. 
Amen, amen. Well, guys, we have a special guest with us today. I'm going to introduce him in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to remind you of what's coming up November 8th. Uh, we're going to be regathering in person. I am so grateful that God has allowed us to have this medium of technology to continue uh, to have online services during this COVID season. But I just got to tell you, there's nothing like being able to be in the room with God's people, praising Him together, learning together. It's just a powerful thing. So here's what's going to happen starting November 8th. Now, all this information will be at our website, crossway.church slash gather. So you can check out the info there, but let me just give it to you verbally as well. So on November 8th, we're going to have three services. 10.30 a.m. online only service. Then we're going to have two services in the evening, a 5 p.m. and a 6.30 p.m. service at New Life Baptist Church. Now, a reminder that our phase one gathering of Crossway Kids looks like this. We'll have Crossway Kids only at our 5 p.m. service for now, and it's going to be toddlers through second grade. So if you have a child or if you, if you don't have children who are in our Crossway Kids program, I want to encourage you to consider checking out our 6.30 p.m. service to free up some space in the five. We will start registration the Wednesday before. So the Wednesday before the eighth, we'll open up registration at crossway.church slash gather. What that simply does is allows us to make sure we have enough space to adequately social distance and make sure everybody is comfortable and safe during this season. Hey guys, I cannot wait to see you. So make sure you mark it on the calendars. Join us for one of those two in-person gatherings. Now today, we have a special guest. His name is Pastor Alan Platt. Uh, Alan Platt is the pastor of the Doxadeo family of churches, started in South Africa. Now their family of churches has, have over 30,000 people a part of them. Uh, Alan Platt moved to South Florida a few years ago, and he's been serving uh, behind the scenes in a lot of ways as the architect behind the Church United movement that you know many of us are involved in. And more than that, he's a voice of wisdom, a voice of encouragement, to me and my life. He's been a mentor and spoken just some really profound words in my life. I am super grateful for who Pastor Alan Platt is, but I'm also really, really honored to be able to have him come and share with you today. I promise you, you need to take a pad and pen out and take an iPhone out to take some notes uh, because I promise you, God is going to speak to you and encourage you this service. So lean in, open your heart because God has a word for you from my friend, Pastor Alan Platt. Well, hello to you, Crossway Church. It's a delight for me to be with you. Uh, obviously, uh, we've had a privilege of journeying with your pastor and uh, knowing them has uh, just been such a blessing for us as they are part of the Church United Unity process in this region. And uh, for us, coming from South Africa, being here the last five years, just seeing what God is doing in this region has been an amazing blessing. Uh, it's also true that a lot of challenge has been experienced by all of us in the last season. And... Um, we're all having to navigate the challenges of life. And I want to talk to you today about how do we as Christ followers engage the challenges of life. Uh, and for us, of course, our, our model of life is Jesus Christ. I just love when I look at the life of Jesus to see how different Jesus was. Uh, when Jesus spoke, he, he spoke different. People would listen to him and say, he speaks differently. It's as if his words have authority. I'm sure people wanted to listen to Jesus. His words brought life. His words... Uh, captivated people's hearts. It brought encouragement. It was as if they, they desired that he would speak. Uh, when uh, Jesus engages uh, his prayer life, the disciples are listening to how he prays and, and they come to him and say, Lord, would you, would you teach us to pray? Because he was praying different. It wasn't a religious prayer. It was as if he was truly speaking to his father. And, and so Jesus does. He, he calls them together and, and he says, this is how you must pray. 
our Father. You have to understand how absolutely radical that statement was for that time. That, that human beings were calling God their Father. It was so different. Jesus was introducing them to a different way of life. Uh, what I really appreciate about Jesus is when circumstances and challenges are there, he, he, he faces it in a different way. They're on the boat. These hardened fishermen are experiencing a storm and, and they're anxious. But Jesus engages it in a different way, so much so that the disciples look at one another and say, what manner of man is this? What kind of person is this? You see, Jesus was different. And it's, it's this difference that we need to understand, that we need to become aware of, because it's that very thing that we see in Jesus that He wants to reproduce in us. When John is writing the Gospel of John, he starts by referencing Jesus in His deity. And then he gets to verse 4. And he makes this incredible statement when he, he tries to capture who this Jesus was. And amazingly, he doesn't say he was this amazing teacher or he was this incredible uh, miracle worker. He says, in him was life. And the life was the light to the world. John says there was something in him that set him apart, that made him a reference. And as John continues to document the story of Jesus, he gets to John 10, where he quotes Jesus sharing his own life mission statement in verse 10, when Jesus says, I have come that you might have life. What a powerful statement. It was as if Jesus was saying, that which you see in me, that which you desire about me, that which fascinates you about me, I have come to reproduce this in you so that you can say, in me is life. And this life becomes the light to the world. Now, for us to understand what this life really means, I want to break it down and give you some practical references of what this life really entails. In the life of Jesus, we see it starts with Jesus understanding his true identity. You see, Jesus knew that he was the Son of God. And the Father reinforces this on his life when he is baptized. Do you remember the story Jesus is baptized in the Jordan, and as he comes up out of the water, the Bible says the heavens open and the Father makes an announcement, a pronouncement over Jesus' life, and he says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. There's nothing more powerful over a child's life when a father makes an affirmation over that life. And here, Jesus has that same moment over his own life where the father says, you're mine, you belong to me, and I'm pleased, I'm proud of you. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that 
the father says he's pleased with Jesus before Jesus had done any miracle before Jesus had started his ministry, before Jesus had gone to the cross. You see, the Father was pleased with Jesus, not because of what he had done, but because of who he was. You are mine. You're my son. You belong to me. The father reinforces his identity. And it's that same reference that you need to discover in your own life because that's our point of departure. Because identity determines activity. The way you see yourself determines how you live, determines how you engage. The way you perceive your own being to be determines how you will respond and react and engage with everybody and everything around you. Therefore, identity is extremely important. And John knew this as he was documenting the gospel of John. He, he writes in John 1 verse 12 that we have that very same moment over our lives of the Father acknowledging us as His own. Listen to what it says in, in John 1 verse 12, For all who have received Him, received Jesus, listen to this, He gave the right to become children of God. For all who have received, very important to understand, this Christian life is not about achieving, it's not about performing, it's not about qualifying, it's about receiving. Uh, if you understand this, it repositions your whole life because it's about how well you receive that will determine whether you truly understand and your acceptance in God or whether you're going to try and perform as an orphan to try and win the acceptance of your father. It's how well you receive. We receive. And if we receive, what does the Bible say? You get the right. So much being said about rights and people knowing, you know, what, what is legally their rights in the time that we're living in. But the biggest right that you can ever discover as a human being is your right to be called a child of God. What's fascinating about this particular scripture is that word that is translated, you have the right to become child of God or children of God, is exactly the same word that is used when the father speaks over Jesus saying, you are my son. It's the Greek word huios, which means inheritor. It means that you've come to maturity and you recognize now as part of the family. And you see, this is so important for us to understand. If we want to navigate the challenges of life and the things that we have to face every day of our life, we have to be secure in who we truly are. For you who have received Jesus Christ, you hear the statement over your life, you are my child. You belong to me. Not because you qualify in your own strength to win my favor, but because God has decided in Christ that you are his child. And you must hear that statement over your life. Where I come from in Pretoria, South Africa, 
There was an eagle in the Pretoria Zoo for 12 years. And uh, they decided, uh, the authorities, that they are going to release this eagle in its natural habitat. And so they had this whole project where they were going to cart this eagle all the way to the region where these eagles are found uh, to function naturally. And uh, when they arrived there, uh, some of our friends were there and they told us this story. They said it was amazing to see they had this big cage and they put it down and, and they were all in anticipation because they were going to open up the cage and anticipate the eagle to fly. And of course, they opened up the cage and the eagle sat. <laughs> that eagle was going nowhere. Because you see, for 12 years, that cage had become the defining reference for that bird. And so it was not wanting to leave, even though freedom was calling. And so they knew they had to get this eagle out of the cage, so they went inside and they started chewing this bird out. And they say it was so funny, it kind of just bounced down on the ground and kind of hopped, hopped out of the cage. And there it sat. Now the eagle was free. You see, the eagle was now out of the cage, but the cage was still in the mind of the eagle. The cage was still defining the reference for that bird. And it did not want to fly. And so they knew it, it's got to fly, otherwise it's going to die. And so they say the people started whistling at the bird and, and some were shouting at it. One guy was even explaining to it why it's so important to fly. Another guy ran in front of the eagle to show the eagle. No avail. But then something amazing happened. They say one of the free eagles of the region started circling above them. And the next moment, the free eagle gave a cry. And the moment that eagle gave a cry, there was immediate resonance. There was an immediate reaction from this eagle. It looked up and it somehow in that cry came to the realization that it was made for more than a cage. It was made for freedom. It was made for flight. Because they say the next moment, as it responded to that cry, the eagle started running, flapping its wings, and it soared off into freedom. You know, when I heard that story, I recognized that's what happens to us. When we hear the voice of the Father, the affirmation of the Father. When we hear what God has come to say over our lives in Jesus Christ. This is so important to understand that you must discover what God's opinion of you will be in Christ. Because He's already made this statement over our lives. Um, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, the Hebrew writer says, God, in various times, in various ways, spoke to us in time past to the fathers by the prophets. So listen to what he's saying. God gave information through the prophets in time past. And so we see how God spoke to Moses and to Gideon and to David and Joseph and all these incredible heroes of the faith. He says, but that's not God's final word over your life. He says, listen to this, He has in these last days spoken to us through the Son. You see, God came to open a new conversation with man in Christ. He came to say something to us in Christ. And the more we discover Christ, the more we discover what God has in mind in Christ, the more we discover His opinion, 
his thoughts about our lives. This is where we discover that you are his child, that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies because you are in Christ. You discover that you are complete because you are in Christ. You discover that you've been forgiven and set free from condemnation and you've been declared righteous because you are in Christ. You discover that He will never leave you, never forsake you. He's your Father because you are in Christ. You see, these are identity issues that when you are faced with circumstance, crisis, things that want to bring anxiety in your life, we approach this with the knowledge that God has already spoken over our lives and we recognize that we are children of God. But it's amazing when we look at Jesus' life and he hears this statement over his life, how the Bible says he, he then enters into the desert and he is tempted by the evil one. And it's interesting, when Satan comes to tempt Jesus, he premises his temptation with a statement, if you are the son. What is he doing? He wants Jesus to doubt whether he truly is the son. And you know what? His strategy has not changed. That's exactly what he wants to do in your life. He wants to bring you to a point where you just don't really know, where you're just not convinced that you really are the son, the daughter, the child of the living God. It's also very interesting that he leaves out very, one very important word when he brings the temptation. He leaves out the word beloved. I believe it was an intentional omission because he knew the power of that concept. If you know that you are loved, you have to understand that God did not just come and make a statement over your life in terms of your identity. He's also invited you into intimacy. And that's the second very important thing to understand is that you have the privilege of proximity. You've been welcomed into relationship with the Father and now He becomes your Father. You see, this is what Jesus wanted us to understand. He knew that humanity had an orphan problem. That's what happened to us in the fall of Adam and Eve. We lost our father. That's why Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going to close the gap. I'm going to bring you back into relationship with your father. As John documents Jesus' life in the Gospel of John, 116 times in the Gospel, the concept of father is repeated over and over again. You've got to understand how, how radical that was. That's why they wanted to kill Jesus. They say, how can you as a human being make yourself equal to God? 116 times over and over, Jesus would say, the father and I are one. The Father loves the Son. The Father loves me. I do nothing unless I see the Father do it. It was this incredible sense of union. The Father and I are one. 
This is the discovery that is so vital for us to have if we start thinking about how to handle the challenges of life. This is what Jesus taught us. He says, don't be anxious for anything. Why? Because you have a father. He says, and if your father cares for the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, how much more will he care for you? See, now it's not just the fact that I know I am son of God. I belong to the family of God. I've been invited into this new reference of identity. But I'm also invited into this experience of intimacy, of fellowship, of being accepted in the beloved. You see, the story of, of the gospel is, in essence, a father that has always longed to be reunited with his children. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18 says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons. And my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This is God speaking over your life. I will be a father to you. You will be my son. You will be my daughter. You belong to my family. You know, the moment you understand this reference in, in your life, that God is no longer Far. One of the things we need to understand about religion, it does, it, it thrives on two things: distance and delay. The essence of all religion says God is far. And you have to perform, you have to do all kinds of things so that hopefully somewhere you will find favor to have just a moment of the blessing of the deity that you're trying to please. Christianity says it's totally different. God has pursued you. He has chased you down. I love in, in Romans 5 when, when Paul writes about the gospel, he's saying, listen, when we were, he starts off, he says, when we were far God reconciled us. And then a little later he says, when you were sinners, <laughs> not just far, but you were missing the mark. You were outside of the plan of God. God reconciled you to himself. And then a little later he says, when you were enemies. He says, even when you were hostile, I reconciled you. Because I have this desire that you will be back in union with me. As John writes, he quotes Jesus in John 14, and he says, At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. He says, If a man loves me, verse 23, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home in him. You see, it, not just, it, God does not just come to visit, he comes with all the luggage, he moves into your life, you become his address. Here on earth, you see, in you is life. There's something that you have become a partaker of that now repositions your life. I recently had to go to the bank. Um, I needed the bank to help me with a pretty complex uh, financing deal. And I remember as I was walking to the bank, I had some self-communication and I, I heard myself say to myself, Ellen, the bank's not going to help you. 
I remember getting to the door of the bank, and as I was about to step in, I heard myself repeat that again. Alan, you're wasting your time. The bank is not going to help you. And in that moment, as I was navigating this, I sensed the Holy Spirit speak to me. And this is what I thought I heard God say to me. <laughs> say, why are you walking into the bank like a loser? And in that moment, I thought, Lord, that is, that's pretty strong. Uh, you know, kind of thinking to myself, may maybe the Lord doesn't have all the information. Maybe if I told him how complex this deal is, he would have more sympathy. <laughs> In that moment, I just sensed the Holy Spirit give me this affirmation. When you walk into this bank, lift up your head. Put your shoulders back. Because the God of the universe has become your Father. And when you walk into this bank, he will walk in with me. You know, it changes your perspective when you recognize your father is with you. As I, as I was pondering that, I even went further to recognize and whether this bank helps me or not. When I walk out of this bank, the God of the universe who has become my father has promised that he would never leave me and he would never forsake me and he has become my security. You see, when I look at the life of Jesus, this is what he knew. He knew who he was and he knew the Father is with him. Once you embrace and allow these two concepts to become clearer, stronger, reinforced in your life, it starts to change the way you navigate the challenges of life. Today, I want to pray for you. I, I want to pray that, that in this next season, you will grow in your understanding of your true identity in Christ. That you will grow in your awareness of the presence of God in your life. Because as you do that, the empowerment for life will just go to another level. For in you is life. And this life is the light to the world. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. Thank you that we can be aware right now that you truly are our Father, that we can hear this this proclamation over our lives, you are mine. I'm proud of you. My smile is upon your life. Not because of what we've done, but because we are in Christ. Right now, Lord, I pray for every person hearing this word that they would just be captivated, knowing that right now they can hear this statement over their lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are not far, that there is no more distance, there is no more delay. You have come close to our lives. We thank you for that. So I bless every individual, every person, every household that is hearing this word. May they truly become overwhelmed with this glorious understanding of who they truly are, and that you are with them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Well, amen. So glad that you're with us for our service today. And also, again, a big thank you to Pastor Alan Platt for that word today. I'm going to speak a blessing over you before you go. Quick reminder, if you want more information about our regathering, check out our website, crossway.church slash gather, November 8th. Three services, 10.30 a.m. online and 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. at New Life Baptist Church. It's going to be a really beautiful time. Now let me speak this blessing over you as you go. Crossway as you go. Go and live your life for the glory of God the Father, resting in the grace of His Son Jesus, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a city on a hill and a light to the world. Go in peace.